All right. Today is Wednesday, the 26th of April. Welcome to another economic discussion. And folks, I got a good one for you tonight. And this time around, we pay a visit to the wall of worry for the stock market and the global economy. And this time around, we're taking a trip to the United Kingdom. You might have heard the news that we got today that UK regulators blocked Microsoft's acquisition. And this decision had severe ramification for the stock of ATVI Activision Blizzard. But this is not the only thing going on in the UK. We have alarming trends developing right now in the UK economy. And perhaps what's going on in Britain serves as a warning for the global economy, but specifically here in the United States. So I hope that my British viewers are ready and excited to watch the program tonight. Grab a cup of tea, few biscuits, roll up your sleeves, and let's dive right into it. Here it is, in focus tonight. Accept being poor says some douchebag from the Bank of England, but we'll take it one step at a time. By now, you might be aware that the President of the United States, Joe Biden, visited the United Kingdom recently. And here he is, getting out of the plane, he meets the Prime Minister, but he shoves him away to salute this guy in military uniform. Watch it again. He goes in, get out of the way, Jack. I want to say hi to the King. And rumor has it, President Biden also asked to meet the Queen. And by the Queen, I mean Queen Victoria from the 1800s. <laughs> And of course, a lot of Britons took offense that President Joey B shoved the first brown prime minister of the UK away, just like he meant nothing at all. He did not even recognize <laughs> that this is the prime minister of the UK. We all know that President Joey B has um, an interesting history when it comes to race, specifically when it comes to Indians. Take a look. You know, I got a lot of support from this, and that's where, and more to come, I think. Yes, so. No, I've, I've had a great relationship. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So fully, I'm not joking. But we cannot accuse Joey B of being racist at all because, uh, in case you did not know, he also happens to be an Indian American. And I learned something, as I told you in the anteroom. When I was in Mumbai, Secretary Kissinger, I found out that uh, what I had heard for so many years was true, that uh, I actually had relatives in Mumbai. I'm delighted to be in Mumbai, a city full of history and uh, dreams and, and incredible energy. One of the first letters I received, and I regret I never followed up on it, maybe some genealogist in the audience could follow up for me. But I received a letter from a gentleman named Biden, B-I-D-E-N, my name, from Mumbai, asserting that we were related. <laughs> Seriously. But it took a little while, and the Secret Service said, hey, Mr. President, uh, the guy you shoved around, he's not working for Dunkin' Donuts. That's the Prime Minister of the UK, of the Conservative Party, and he's rich as f and of course, President Biden did apologize and he acknowledged Prime Minister Richie Sunak. No, I'm just kidding. He actually made fun of him and he called him Rashid Snooki. Take a look. We've got news. That Rashid, Rashid Snook is now the Prime Minister. As my brother would say, go figure. <laughs> and the Conservative Party. But folks, what I want to talk about tonight is what's going on regarding inflation. Here in the United States, we have plenty of economists and uh, talking heads on TV who already declared inflation dead. Inflation is over, they say. Sure, the headline CPI went down from about 9% all the way down to 5% recently. Yet the core CPI remains sticky, and there is no guarantee at all that we will see more declines coming in the core CPI. For all we know, we could see a resurgence of inflation again. Now you might say, but Maverick, you're crazy. Inflation is going down. We have disinflation in the economy. That's what the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell told me, and I believe him. You might want to pay attention to the corporate earnings we're getting so far. Company after company after company continue to raise prices higher and the consumer has no other choice but to continue to pay. And that comes with a combination of a deteriorating pace of economic activity. The combination of higher prices and a slower economy is 
Stagflation, baby. We have a lot of skepticism in this country that inflation is already dead, shut up, it's gonna go away. You might wanna pay attention across the Atlantic to what's going on in the UK. That country is becoming an economic disaster zone. Last week, we got the news that UK inflation shocked the world and climbed back to double digits territory. So any economy, be it in the EU or in the US or anywhere. If you assume that inflation is going to go down in a V-shape, you got another thing coming to you. And the UK serves as a proof to that. And there are many components in why UK inflation remains sticky and climbing higher. But the most important component is food, which is the most destructive and crushing type of inflation of them all. The inflation rate in the UK stands as the highest in Western Europe at 10.1%. And as you can see, we have Austria at 9.2%, Italy at 8.2%, Sweden 81 These are extremely high numbers, an unacceptable rate of inflation. Yet we see European and US stocks moving significantly higher. And just because the stock market is doing okay, Folks assume that we resolved the inflation problem, but we're not even close. We'll look at the CPI in the UK. You see that in white versus the CPI in the US in yellow. And then in the EU in pink, these are elevated, extremely elevated levels of inflation. And we know that Europe cannot take their inflation levels down without aid from the US Federal Reserve. And the reason is commodities, for the most part, are priced in the US dollar. And the Federal Reserve needs to increase the value of the US dollar to drop the prices of commodities down so the British and the European consumer breathe a sigh of relief, at least momentarily when it comes to inflation. In this program, we talked about the currency wars and how the lack of coordination between the ECB, the Federal Reserve, and the Bank of England will lead to a global economic disaster when it comes to inflation. You see, the Federal Reserve has been the most aggressive out of them all by raising rates significantly higher in a short amount of time. And last year, we saw the value of the US dollar surging significantly higher. And with that came disinflation in commodities. But then the Fed looked at the progress around and said, okay, maybe we should slow it down from 75 basis points to 50 basis points high to 25 basis points hikes. And the lack of aggression by the Fed meant that the dollar will lose value. And we saw the dollar moving down from October of last year significantly. You add to that the fact that European countries, the ECB and the Bank of England now, are catching up to the Fed by raising rates higher, which elevates the value of the euro and the British pound. And the problem with that is, when the value of the dollar goes down, regardless of what the Bank of England and the ECB are doing right now, the drop in the value of the dollar increases the value of commodities, because most of them are traded in the US dollar, which means it is counterproductive. The ECB continues to raise rates higher, so is the Bank of England, but with little results to show, unlike what the Fed has done here in the US. And by raising rates, the BOE and the ECB are slowing down the respective economies, but they're not necessarily defeating inflation, specifically commodities inflation, because the US Federal Reserve has the most control over commodities. And the numbers are shocking, folks. We'll look at the UK CPI rate, 10.1% year on year, but the details are even more shocking. Housing and household services up by 26.1% year on year. Food and non-alcoholic drinks up 19.1%. Restaurants, hotels up 11.3%. Not a single category is down year on year. And the increase in food prices is absolutely crushing the British consumer. Take a look. Food price inflation is at 19.2%. So that's why things like the fruit and veg that you see here, when you go and buy it in the shop, you feel it's significantly more expensive than it was a year ago. Matter of fact, food and drink inflation in the UK is sitting at the highest rate since 1977. Unbelievable. And while inflation rises higher, wages are falling behind. Of course, they're increasing, just like we see here in this country, but we will look at nominal earnings with bonuses 5.9%. Without bonuses, 6.6%, which I believe this is a typo. Otherwise, these bonuses are not working. If you get a bonus and you get a reduction in pay, that doesn't make sense at all. So I believe with bonuses, wage inflation is at 6.6%, without bonuses at 5.9%. Yet real wages, meaning adjusted to inflation, are down across the board. Negative 3% with bonuses and negative 2.3% without bonuses. 
In other words, the UK consumer is losing to inflation and they cannot cope with the cost of living crisis. And the result of all of that, we're seeing strikes across the United Kingdom, the worst wave of strikes in 30 years. Workers are now demanding better pay. This is what happens when central banks are late to the game, when they don't control inflation right from the get-go. Inflation gets out of hand, inflation expectations get out of hand, and we have a wage inflation spiral. And the higher wages go, the higher the inflation rate. And wages all in all, despite all of these increases, fall further behind. Not to mention the economic damage that is going on from all of these strikes. We will look at the monthly contribution to the GDP in February for the UK. Huge reduction from education, public administration and defense, transportation and storage, information and communication, professional, scientific and technical, administration and support, all contributed negatively to the GDP in the month of February. But rest assured, folks, the Chancellor says that Britain's economy is back and it's better than ever before. And I say, is it back um, back to the 1970s? Is it back in the dumpster? Is it back in your rear end? Because it's not back as in a good thing. With an inflation rate of above 10% and real waging collapsing, this is not a good economy. This is an economic catastrophe. But if you happen to live in the UK and uh, you're not satisfied with what's going on in the economy and you demand better pay so you can keep up with inflation, shame on you. You must accept being poor, says the Bank of England. Take a look. And the Bank of England's top economist, he's called Hugh Pill, he's upset quite a lot of people. He says we've got to get used to being poorer and not expect pay rises. That's right. He was talking on a podcast in the United States. There was a, a reluctance to accept, he said, that we are all just worse off. He said that workers had to stop asking for higher wages and businesses need to stop passing costs on to customers. Well, joining us for more is uh, economist Justin Urquhart Stewart. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. It, is there any grain of truth to this, what he's saying? Oh, and, and, it was, and it was just tone deaf. Did he have a slight point? Well, I think, think he's probably got a new name now, which is probably Poison Pill. Yeah. Yes. It's not often you see the head of the economics and Bank of England on the front page of the Daily Mail. Yeah. That's not his job. Giving no. us a bitter pill to swallow. <laughs> but yeah, the answer is uh, there are two things here. A, we have built up a huge amount of personal debt, um, and some of that's down to misbehaviour by banks our own stupidity, um, also in terms of what's happened with interest rates. We've all been lulled into a situation where uh, money's cheap, very easy to get hold of, interest rates are permanently at half percent. For those of a certain age, which I know does include either of you, who may think back to the 1970s, remember it at 25 percent, sadly. I'm watching my father with a fixed pension, losing a quarter of its value in a year. It's really, really dangerous. Again, out of touch, out of mind. But is there a point, economically speaking? Sure. The higher wages go, the higher the inflation rate. There is a correlation. If companies have to pay more in wages, they have to make up for that by increasing prices on the end consumer. And this vicious cycle continues to go on and on and on. And inflation gets out of hand. On the other hand, what do you say to folks suffering from inflation right now? They want better wages. The status quo is not acceptable. And mind you, it will get a lot worse for the British consumer. Because as bad as it is right now, it is happening while natural gas prices have already crashed, but they're moving their way higher again. Natural gas prices are bottoming and moving higher again. And all of this pain that the British consumer is experiencing right now, it is happening under cooling petrol prices. What happens if petrol prices move higher again? And this is a possibility this coming summer. You combine this with increasing food prices that don't seem to stop at all, it would be an economic disaster for the British consumer. And even with the drop in energy prices that we enjoyed recently here in the US and even in Germany, the Eurozone, even if it is marginal, the UK economy continues to suffer from the highest energy bills in Europe. And again, the question is, what happens to these bills if we see a rebound in energy prices? But folks, when we talk about an impending economic doom, with an inflation rate above 10% in the UK, we know, historically speaking, that to defeat inflation, interest rates by central banks have to exceed the rate of inflation. We know that from the experience that we had here in the US in the 70s and the 80s with Paul Volcker. And we know it now, as the US Federal Reserve under Jay Powell continues to raise rates and they're coming closer to the conclusion that to defeat inflation, they have to get rates above the rate of inflation. Right now, rates by the BOE, not even close to the inflation rate, which means they have a lot of catching up to do. They have to raise rates closer to 10% to resolve this problem. But if they do so, 
they're going to move the UK economy into a deep recession, if not even a depression. And this will be the price to pay to get rid of inflation out of the economy. Why are we in this situation to begin with? Because central banks in 21 continued to dismiss inflation as transitory. They're catching up too late. And the more work they do in raising rates, the more damage takes place in the economy. Raising rates earlier on in the fight against inflation sure has a tangible negative impact in the economy but at that stage the economy has the cushion to absorb these shocks now that they're too late the economy is already weakened and any marginal increase in interest rates is amplified in terms of economic damage just imagine what will happen if the boe indeed increases rates above five percent to six percent seven percent 8% closer to 10%. What will happen to the British economy? What will that country look like? Because we know that the BOE has been missing the inflation estimate quarter after quarter after quarter. Seven quarters of misses by the BOE. Inflation continues to surprise to the upside. And again, keep in mind, to defeat inflation, rates will have to go significantly higher in the UK. But can the economy absorb the shock right now? The answer is absolutely not. When we look at the banking sector in the UK, it never really recovered from the pandemic. And as we see more and more bank blowups here in the United States from Silicon Valley Bank, and the latest, it's just a matter of time right now, First Republic Bank, that one is going to blow up any time now. Are we already seen Swiss Bank blowing up? What if British banks also start to blow up? And the BOE is not even close to getting rates to the restrictive range to take inflation down. And banks are already blowing up. What will happen if rates go near 10% in the UK? The economy flatlined in the month of February, no growth at all. And the only positive growth in the UK economy is coming from construction. And this is happening due to inflation in real estate prices and foreign investors. But the services sector of the economy has yet to recover. And in their latest projection, the IMF sees the UK economy growing negatively this year, while the majority of Western economies enjoying positive growth. And the cumulative result of all of this is a lack of confidence by global investors in the UK economy. The headline reads from Bloomberg, global investors slashing UK stocks exposure, according to B of A survey. 21% of fund managers say that they're underweight the UK. And we know that the FTSE 100 UK stock market is underperforming its peers. While the DAX is moving higher, even the Dow Jones here moving higher, UK equities continue to lag. And folks, the bottom line is the inflation phenomenon in the global economy is not over yet. What we have right now is just a retreat by inflation due to the drop in energy prices. But the moment they rebound, combine this with sticky inflation here in the US in services and increasing inflation in the UK and EU, this fight is far from over. But it is absolutely mind-blowing how in this country, in the USA, everybody seems to assume that the fight against inflation is over. We won, but the example from the UK serves as a dire warning that this is far from over. And with that lovely outlook, we reach the conclusion of this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you did, return the favor by pressing the like button, subscribing, you know the deal. Now folks, if you happen to be a member of the channel, we did stock market analysis today, and you will see a link to the video in the screen. But if you're not, rest assured, I got you covered this Sunday. We're going to go over the stock market activities throughout the week. And I'm also going to have another spicy topic here, economic topic. We're going to talk about bank lending here in the U.S. in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned. But for now, this is all I got for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Take care. Let's show.